Jimmy O from Joe Blow. Hey, Edgar, how are you? Nice. It's twice in one week. I know. It's been a while. Not only do I get to see you in person, but I get to talk to you about this amazing movie. I'm so happy. <laughs> Dude, I, I'm blown away. Uh, you, your music has always been such an important part of what you do. But here, it, 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 I think you even elevated it further, uh, it, the way it moves the, the story along. Can you talk about finding the right sound to mix with this kind of this, this look and this atmosphere that you have here? I guess part of it is that, uh, you know, in a way, like choosing the music and kind of writing the story go hand in hand, because what you're in both cases, you're sort of zoning in on like a particular tone. And like, I really, you know, like, I mean, sort of part of the conception of the movie comes from an obsession with a decade that I never lived in. And that started with music because it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily that I, at the age of six, that I was watching kind of like, you know, a taste of honey or like blow up, but I was listening to the 60s music and I like, you know, figured out how to use the record player and I would be happily kind of like listening to all of my parents' 60s records. So that was something that uh, I guess if I started an obsession with a decade that I never lived in, that was the start of it. And then in a way, like not dissimilar to Eloise in the movie, she inherits her grandmother's records in the same way that like, you know, when I, my parents never seemed to play their record collection anymore when I was growing up. So I kind of just kind of like, just kind of, you know, took them myself and started playing them. So yeah, the, the music and the, the, the conception of the story go hand in hand, really. Yeah, I, I got that. And I, I loved how it kind of put, put, put everything forward. And it's such a, there's such a beautiful, like a mix of, uh, of inspiration here in the look of the film, in the way you style it. This is a really beautiful thriller that I, was that kind of tricky for you? Cause you haven't done, I don't think really a straightforward thriller like this. Well, it's definitely a challenge and something that I think with any new project, you want to kind of set the bar higher than you know, you could clear, you know, otherwise what's the point, you know, like, so there's always an element of like tr reaching for something. I think at the point where you maybe become complacent or like say, oh, I know how to do this and you're just phoning it in is like, is the end. So there's always an element where you're with a new project, you're doing something you haven't done before. And with this, there were several things I'd never done before, but that was a challenge that I wanted to take on. And, you know, I'd been thinking about the film for like a decade. So I'd sort of, part of me had been gearing up to do this, you know. And, and Anya and Thomason. I mean, really perfect casting. How, how difficult was the casting process in finding the right two people? Well, I mean, in the case of Annie Taylor-Joy, she was the first actor that I talked to about it. And it was, a, it was sort of became a, not a matter of like, will you be in it more of like which, which part? Because I met her in six years ago in 2015, right after The Witch. And even though I hadn't written a word of the screenplay, I decided that Annie Taylor-Joy should be the star of my Soho film. But back then I was thinking of her for Eloise. And then over the years, well, especially when we'd written the screenplay in 2018, um, it was clear that um, it started to become clear as the Sandy part expanded, that Anya should be playing that part. And when I sent her the script, luckily she agreed. So then, then it was like, that was the first person cast, first person we went to. So Anya was on board and then it was like, okay, who's gonna play Eloise? And Naira Park was the first person to, mentioned Thomas and McKenzie and I'd seen Leave No Trace and thought it was wonderful but I think maybe like she's so kind of um naturalistic in that movie I wasn't even sure whether that was a an actor or not like sort of um playing the daughter in Leave No Trace so uh and I didn't know she was a uh, from New Zealand um so you know when I met her and she was excited about doing the role I had a really good feeling about it and you know she is so incredibly talented for her years well, dude, we got to wrap. Again, amazing, amazing movie. You just keep, keep cranking them out, man. Beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When you've got troubles, all the noise and the hurry seems to help, I know. Downtown.
Just listen to the music of the traffic in the city Linger on the sidewalks where the neon signs are pretty How can you lose? Forget all your troubles, forget all your cares, so go down. 